Let's take a look at some of the startup 3D meshes that we can find inside ZBrush. I'm going to go up to my tool palette, click on the palette handle and drag that over to the right hand side. You notice that you have a button here which is your current active tool. If you click on that, you're going to notice a shelf here that says startup 3D mesh. So click on one of these. I'm going to choose the gear. I'm going to click and drag and draw that into my canvas. I'll hit the edit button to make that editable so that I can rotate it around my scene. And then let's scroll down to the initialize pull down. So if you open up initialize, you'll notice that there's a lot of settings associated with this gear. One of them might be something like coverage. We can even change the outer profile of the spikes and make a very unique tool very different from the initial one that we started with. Once you're done converting this to the different settings that you want, you can scroll all the way up to the top of your tool palette and click Make Poly Mesh 3D. Once we click Make Poly Mesh 3D, that'll make this tool editable, meaning that we can start working on it and sculpting on it. So I'm going to hit Control D twice just to add a little bit more resolution to this. And I might choose something like my blobby brush. And I can start sculpting away. Let's take a look at another tool inside ZBrush. So I'll hit the letter T, which is also the keyboard shortcut for edit, and then Control N to clear that. Again, I'm going to go to the active tool icon, open that up, and then choose something else. click and drag to draw that into your canvas and then again hit the edit button so that we can start working with it. Now let's scroll back down to initialize. Now when you open up initialize for this different tool for this spiral you'll notice that we have several different settings. Each initial primitive is going to have its own settings here under initialize. So this one also has coverage that we can turn up or down. We can change the thickness and many different attributes. So I suggest when you're new to ZBrush, just jump into this tool palette here, check out each one of these primitives, and see what you can do. So again, now that we're done changing these initial settings, I'm going to go up to Make Poly Mesh 3D, and then we can start sculpting. Take notice that that initial setting pulldown has now disappeared. Once you convert it to a Poly Mesh 3D, you won't be able to change any of those initial settings. So you'll want to set all the settings to what you want before you convert it. Now we can start sculpting. I'm going to hit the letter T again, and then Control N to clear. Let's click this button here that says Default C Script, which is going to take us back to our Start menu. I'm going to select one of these common use tools. And let's take a look at this Poseidon character. Now this Poseidon character is a PolyMesh 3D at this point which means it doesn't have any initial settings, but I can do sculpting on it right away. If you were to import a .obj file from a different program, you would also be able to sculpt on it right away, but you wouldn't be able to change any initial settings. Those are reserved just for these startup 3D meshes.